the majority of people describe themselves as animal lovers and they truly mean it when they say it. The thing is, our society was built in a way that we made the difference, the distinction between some animals and others. Some would be kept at home and taken care of, just like if they were part of our families and just beings with interests of their own. And some were bred into existence for the sole purpose of feeding us. And as a matter of fact, they didn't have the chance to choose their fate. Their fate was already decided upon before they were even born. So, when did we become disconnected? What happened so that we choose to take care of some and consider them almost as human beings and leave others to be treated in a miserable way and being killed for no reason. And this could be described as what's called carnism. And that's a concept that Melanie Joy explains in her book why we eat pigs, love dogs and wear cows. I, I will link all the different uh, materials I will be mentioning in this video will be linked down below. And in this book, quickly, um, to sum up what it's about, she explains that this um, concept of carnism, which is um, basically the, the principle on which our society lies, is based on the three ends rule and it's basically the fact that we consider eating meat or even animal products in general as something that's normal, natural and necessary. So you didn't really have a choice when you were born and I think that actually when we're brought on this planet when we live, we get to live here for the first time as babies, children, kids, the first time we come across animals, we can relate to them. We, without knowing, we just have this instinct that they are more similar to us than they are different from us. We can just identify in their eyes and just by absorbing them, absorbing them in nature, we can just tell that they are individuals of their own as well. And we can tell that they also have the ability to suffer like us. We can tell that they enjoy having a belly rub. We can tell that they enjoy spending some quality time with their fellow friends we can tell that they seek love from one another. They seek the love from their mother and in that sense, as kids, naive, candid kids who haven't been influenced yet by society, we act with our hearts. We communicate with animals even though we don't have the same language. And when growing up, when growing up we, we forget this. We forget how pure it felt the first time we connected with the animals. We forget that they were living beings with interests of their own and that we've reduced their one and only life to the sole purpose of being raised and exploited and 
just restrain to the state, yeah, reduce to the state of an object. And although we are raised with values such as kindness and respect, compassion toward other people, we grow up thinking that those are the values we truly embody, but as a matter of fact, our, um, our circle of these values is just narrowed down to human beings and pets. But if you are like me and a lot of people, an animal lover, I, I want to help you to truly let that love for animals rise and I want you to be able to expand that love to as many individual beings, animal beings, as much as you can. So my first tip here would be to watch documentaries, to inform yourself. They are, they are just, in 2019, it's inevitable. You can find documentaries on animal condition, animal exploitation, animal abuse, uh, farm animals. You can find these documentaries everywhere, whether it's on Netflix or YouTube. And here are some that would, I would highly recommend. Forks Over Knives, Earthlings, Dominion, the most important speech you'll ever hear. That's on YouTube from Gary Yurovsky. What the Health and Cowspiracy um, on Netflix. If you want to help animals because you love them, you have to learn. You have to unveil the truth. You have to open your eyes to the harsh truth. Once you're aware, only then do you have the capacity, the power to act and make informed decisions. If you're ignorant of what's happening there and what the conditions are for these animals, you cannot help them. So that's the first step. Just do the research. Read books like How Not to Die and The China Study so that you can actually understand the impact of consuming animal products on your health. If after watching these documentaries you feel empowered to embody that change, if you feel empowered to question your habits and slowly change them and adopt new ones, then you can try a plant-based diet. It's actually been proved that it's one of the most, if not just the most efficient diet in terms of envir environmental impact. So, it's the least harming diet for the planet. So, by that logic, if you are first not consuming animals, not consuming their flesh, their body parts, their secretions, and if you are in the same, at the same time helping to reduce your footprint and, yeah, just that's the most effective way you can help the animals because you're, you're doing something that's actually the aim is to preserve their home which is our home as well and if you think about it the human being is actually the only species who is destroying their home so it doesn't make sense why do we pretend to be animal lovers when we are destroying their home and ours at the same time. Um, so try a plant-based diet. There are many websites out there to help you on the way. There's Vegan Challenge 22, sorry, which is a mentoring program and you can try the plant-based diet for 22 days. If you have any doubt, any question, uh, there are some nutritional um, advisors there who can guide you on your journey. There is also 
if you're a German speaker, there is um, veganstart.de. It's a 30 day challenge. Um, you can try it for free, get recipes, get more information. Um, what else? And basically, there are just so many ways to help you on the way. Um, you can find many apps such as Happy Cow. There's also the website, and that just allows you to find places with either vegan options or just vegan friendly places, restaurants, cafes, or even 100% vegan restaurants and cafes around you. So, wherever you might travel, you're never alone. There's always opportunities, always options everywhere. And, oh, one thing I also wanted to add, um, I think it's very important because we truly are all animal lovers, um, like deep down in our hearts. And actually when, when people walk into a supermarket or in a restaurant, they don't really have the intention of killing an animal. They actually they, they wouldn't even be able to do it themselves. So we are just we've just become disconnected. We have um, principles that are deeply embedded into our minds and that we strongly believe in. And on the other side, our actions are totally not aligned with these morals so if you just like want to find a state of peace with yourself and just feeling that you're doing something that's right and that makes sense then living a vegan lifestyle is the solution and sorry but there's no health vegan or being yeah a third vegan there's no flexitarian who can truly say they love animals or being vegetarian and although I, I thought that being vegetarian as I started would help animals because I wouldn't kill a cow or a pig to eat their flesh well Indirectly, I was still killing calves and male chicks who were being shredded alive because I chose to consume eggs or a piece of cheese. So, just, just give a try to that diet, the plant-based diet, and, and see how you feel. That's something that's just so powerful and I always tell people when, for my part, as being 100%, well, having a, a plant-based diet since over three years now, I've never felt as great as I'm feeling now. So, to me, what, my, what is in my body, what, what flows in my blood, what the energy I get from this diet, that is my truth. What I can feel right now, it's something that's tangible, that's concrete. So that's why I tell people, just give it a try. And you will tell if you feel just half, like twice better, or if you feel just a little bit better at first than on an Omni diet, that's still something. And that shows you that there's foods, like plant-based foods, can actually improve your life in different aspects. And if you feel amazing and you can just radiate that around you and people will just find it interesting, well, the way you feel cannot be argued with. That's something that belongs to you, that's something that you feel deep down. and. When I tell people I've never felt as great as right now, it's something that's just so deep that 
nobody can tell me my vegan diet or my vegan lifestyle is wrong or not adapted, inappropriate for because I'm, I don't know, whatever, a woman and I couldn't get enough protein or whatever. No, that's nobody can argue with this because first I know, I've done some blood tests um, to check if, if everything was fine and when you feel so positive and that you have such a clear mind and you're at peace with yourself for not inflicting unnecessary pain on animals that's something that nobody can argue about or tell you if it's right or wrong you just you just feel it um, if you are already vegan then if you truly love animals well, remember, why in the first place did you choose to go vegan? Was it just for the diet? Yeah, maybe, and that's fine. There are some people who tried um, because that's the argument that convinced them. And some people actually had severe diseases and a plant-based plant diet truly helped them to heal that disease. But at some point, or straight from the beginning, we all come to the realization that there is an injustice out there and we went vegan because we live in a system where there's this huge injustice like back in the time of slavery and we're surrounded by people who were raised to think that this is normal and I used to see it as normal because I just I just grew up like this and once you open your eyes and you see that injustice well first it's awesome that you decide not to take part into that injustice it's amazing that people make the commitment not to harm animals by not consuming them but there is being vegan having a plant-based diet is one thing not consuming animals is one thing but actually speaking up and sharing the message raising awareness about that injustice is something else and that's what we need that's what you need to do if you truly love animals, if you're an animal lover, the only way you can actually help them is by speaking up for them because although they have a voice, that voice is just belittled and not even considered, it's, it's completely disregarded in this society because they're treated and seen as objects. So that's why if you deeply down inside of you, you went vegan because you just wanted to change this world and just create a new one for these animals to live in peace and not in a state of oppression well then you have to get active in some way and what's great is there are so many ways you might be someone who's shy you might be someone who doesn't dare to speak in front of people you might be someone who's not artistic in any way, you might be someone who, who is just lazy, whatever, but there is always an appropriate, like an adapted type of activism that will match for you. And here are some examples, um, stickers, you can like order some stickers um, on different websites I will link some down below and you can just put some stickers in the street um, in some stores, restaurants that carry little messages just for people to kind of connect and realize what's truly on their plate to just question their habits of consuming three times a day the flesh of animals or their secretions. You can 
do some chalking. You just go on the street, write with some chalk different messages of peace and compassion. Things like just go vegan or watch Earthling, watch Dominion. And there's an activist in the US, I can't recall his name. But he actually, one time, or several times, he would go on top of a bridge and put himself upside down and write on that bridge in just that huge letters, he would write, watch earthlings. And a couple of months or years later, um, someone saw a movie that he was projecting or something and there was a, a clip of that earthling written on the bridge and the guy came to him and was like oh my god I, I saw this on a bridge a couple of months or years ago and thanks to this I went vegan I mean you never know the impact you could have just by writing something on the street on the road where people can actually see it you can help someone make the connection so that's a very powerful form of activism as well. You can give conferences and speeches by going in schools and universities, colleges, um, at your workplace if you are allowed to, if there are some, because sometimes like workplaces, like companies try to engage more um, into environmental issues. So you could you know, just suggest um, giving a little conference, workshop um, to help people reduce their impact on the planet. And in that one, you could just like stick there a part where you talk about the benefits uh, of a plant-based diet. You could organize some workshops, take part to animal rights marches, like um, the animal rights march that's organized by Surge. Um, which is um, a British organization led by Earthling Ed. I will link um, more info down below. You could do street activism with different associations. Like I know in France there is um, L214, so that's L214. There is Anonymous for the Voiceless, which you can find in all countries in different cities. And if you're not someone who's really um, talkative, you can just stand in a cube and carry a laptop to show people the footage of the actual condition of how um, animals are being raised and exploited. Or you can do what's called outreach and directly speak and en engage with people into conversations. And as for me, it's just one experience that changed my life. I never made has, as many human, deep human connections with people and just witnessing the moment, the second where that click just happened in their eyes, in their minds and just being there to witness this was such a blessing and a beautiful experience. So that's why Anonymous for the Voiceless just, yeah, it, it made me grow into the person I am now and I will be forever thankful for it. Um, but I will link down below different associations that um, you could help with. Um, and also be active on social media. I try to do my part as much as I can um, on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. You can just share some articles that you write, you can share some poems that you write, you can write some songs about animal rights, you can create a podcast and engage with people who are not vegan as well to share different points of view. You can, um, yeah, there are just, just, there are just so many ways to be active. Um, and also I think that would be the less point I want to bring up that's reducing your waste because we all know by now that the the oceans are just full with plastic and that at some point I think yeah at some point in their life all birds will have ingested 
uh, plastic because now it's just so tiny and we might even be breathing plastic or drinking plastic because there are just all these tiny particles that get everywhere and so you can reduce your consumption of plastic packaged foods or uh, you can just try to find new ways to consume and generally consume more meaningfully. Ask yourself if you really need something and if you cannot replace it with another option that's more environmental friendly. Um, ask yourself if, if you can reuse things or upcycle things. Ask yourself if you cannot find something that you truly need but secondhand. Um, there are just so many opportunities to reduce our footprint on this planet and yeah, at the same time reduce the harm that we're causing to animals and just try as much as we can not to impact their home, which as well which is as well our home. And for this I will recommend two documentaries, uh, Plastic Oceans and Minimalism, and I will try to uh, link more documentaries down below.